Hey, we got it. It's live. Nah. It is forever. No, forever we barely. Christmas. We missed it. I didn't do it. <clears throat> I did it. Well, that's what you um, do and what I do are two different things because you record audio for the show and I just run a stream on Twitch. Well, Which my, yeah, mine is clearly the harder part. Okay, just so we know. <laughs> just so everybody knows, my like responsibilities title. are the harder responsibilities. You sound title like John's co-worker. autobiography. <laughs> write my own memoir. I'm not leaving it to nobody else. That's the that's, that's the title of biography. All y'all, re- all y'all revisionist history people, trying to tell my story wrong. I'm gonna explain why I was the greatest LVO head judge of all time. Oh my god! And everybody else was trash. <laughs> there's plenty. There's plenty of players who disagree. Uh, <laughs> that's the say, other part. That gonna there's gonna be a whole chapter in the memoir of why why I don't care about the opinion of the the players at OVO. <laughs> of the players. There will be a chapter of I shit on the people. This is not a joke. <laughs> this is not a bit. It's like half the bug. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's not a bug. It's a feature. Yep. <laughs> this is what you pay for. I know, right? I bet they'd argue that's not what they pay for. (laughs) Well, I mean, there's not all that many people who pay us to do this, so um, I guess it really doesn't matter. True, true. We should care what they think, like what Dan thinks. (laughs) All right. Are you ready to uh, start? Yeah, for all three people on on the... In the audience, right? Now. I mean, yeah, that's fine. Nope, now it's just one. <laughs> Already five. Well, that's, that's probably me. Four. Yeah, I was gonna say it's just Adam. Three. Mm-hmm. Two. One. Go. Hey, everybody! Uh, welcome to another episode of TFG Radio. As you'll soon see, or can see, and well, two of us. And here right. we have Dan, Dan, Danny back with us. Hey, 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 hey. Due to technical difficulties, you can only see two. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No one. Wants to and see uh, as you just heard on the wheels of steel is uh, John. Yep. Hello. Uh, John the and uh, I, there there are a few people that you know said hi while I was at the Las Vegas team tournament, and that one person actually wondered if you actually were a DJ because I kept on because I keep on saying wheels of steel. Yeah. <laughs> I could be. I, I have most I of said, the sound equipment for it. <laughs> well, there's your uh, alternate uh, employment pathway when you need it. I, I, don't, I don't have the skills for that, I can tell you right now. I mean, I, most DJs don't either, yet here we are. Yeah. I mean, I could MC. I have the voice for that, but I don't, I don't have the skills to do the actual like turntable stuff. Uh, you just need to hit play on an iPod, dude. It's fine. Yeah, nobody does that anymore. That's right. Just create a playlist. And, yeah, and just yeah. make sure you have premium Spotify, so when you're playing that, you're not just getting the like Olive Garden ads in the middle of the wedding, and you'll be okay. I don't. I, I pay for premium Spotify. Okay, I'm no pleb. But you're telling me I don't need to have no uh, Technic turntables anymore. No, nope. I mean not. I mean, for if most you want to be considered with the diamond needles and all my vinyl. <laughs> I mean, at least I know the terminology. I know. It's more than I do. <laughs> That should be reversed, see... Danny. If we think about it, <laughs> I just no. want to hear John at like a strip as a strip club DJ. No, All right. Next we have Melody, yeah. Melody, Melody, <laughs> Melody. <laughs> Psst, that's not my name. I changed it. Sounds better. <laughs> just go. I with can it. say the other one. Uh, oh God. Okay. okay, let's move on from okay. that conversation. <laughs> So no, no, I think that was bearing uh, fruit. I, we should keep going. I don't think so. I wasn't making... <laughs> uh, so speaking of which, uh, we had two big tournaments over the last the last time since the last show we had. We had the Las Vegas team tournament, which I was the head judge for, and then we had the GW New Orleans, New Orleans Open, which uh, John was judging at, mm-hmm. and was one of the key judges, I, I believe. At the Marshall, uh, I believe is the correct term. Yeah, uh, we use Marshall, the term Marshall. Yes. Marshall, did you get a badge? No, but the shirt literally says Marshall. Hmm. Uh, mine just says staff. I was kind of well, hoping I think that there's a clear would... winner there. <laughs> I was huh? kind of hoping that GW would go with like RB days or whatever. <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah, but they went with Marshall. Remember we were fine. thinking it's, it's when... like a it's a British term, right? 
Yeah. Remember we were thinking of doing that for ours, for LVO? Yeah. I, I prefer I Judge. I like our, our purple our purple and green Hulk shirts, too. Well, I, I, believe, I, I tried those. I believe we're going with yellow. What? Uh, Why? Why are we changing? We have purple. None of y'all have the... I mean, well... No, Adam, Adam has... We already have, have purple. I have yellow, three purple yellow. shirts. Why are we changing? I know. I have. I still have the ones from two years ago that nobody... That we had extras of. Who's making that decision? That is an executive decision, I believe, but we, well, I think we can talk. I'm going to have terms... <laughs> I'm going to have words with whatever executive is making that decision, because I already have three freaking purple shirts, and they're not going to buy us shirts for each day. I know that, and I don't want to smell. Yeah. Yes. Correct. And that's why I bring my little mini Febreze. <laughs> no, this is why we get purple shirts. They were nice ones, too. I quit. Yeah, I like the purple shirts. I thought they were... They were great. Fucking cool. Well, we'll we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> John's already done. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. You know what we do? Purple for us, yellow for all the new judges. Oh, yeah. So they know hilarious. the tier. Oh, God. There we go. That way we don't have they don't have to buy more purple shirts. <laughs> they don't want to buy purple. What's what's wrong with these people? <sighs> Jesus. I didn't realize this was gonna set you off. Yeah. But I'm glad it does, by the way. I don't want to look. I don't. <laughs> no, what, no, color are, going, what, color, what color are the GW shirts? Yellow, like neon yellow. Okay. Well, there you go. My sister, my sister saw. So Kicker tagged me in a picture of me and him, and it's public. Yeah. So my sister saw it, and so she's like, "That's an ugly shirt." And Kicker's like, "My <laughs> wife gave me this shirt." She's like, "I'm talking about John's shirt." <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I like how Kicker's assuming that it's his shirt. Yeah. His shirt was cool. His shirt had like big bright parrots on it. I don't know. I, I liked his shirt. Yeah. So uh, I was at Las Vegas Las Vegas team tournament. Uh, it had 58 teams, five-man teams. It was uh, at the – where was it at? Not Sun, Was it Sunset Station? One of the station casinos. Yeah, was, I think it was Sunset stations. Station. Yeah. Because there's like two or three in, that, in Vegas, so – um, and they're all basically laid out the same. Because when I went there, I'm like, I think I've yeah. been here before, but I was at a different. They they station. just built five of them at once. Yeah. I think. <laughs> same contracting <laughs> company. Build one here, and then yeah. here, and then here, and then here. <laughs> Name of all funny. station. Do you want to change it at all? Nope. Same layout. Yeah. Or was it Golden Station? I don't remember. It was, I just remember station. It was a Palace station. station. Yes. Oh, it was Palace Station. Yes. Thank you. Palace John. is the more popular one, I believe. Sure. Sure, why not? I'm going to go with what I say because I'm an expert. It was, it was, uh, it was fine. The ven- the venue was, uh, you know, comp- it's not LVO, so it, it was only 40k, uh, five man teams. Uh, in terms of format, in the in team composition, it was like that. The difference between that and most other team tournaments is that the the way the scoring was done was different. Where the way Frontline decided to do it was almost like a just to keep it simple and for new players to to uh, play. Because they just went straight with basically best out of five games. So, in other in other in other game in other tournaments like ATC, uh, ETC, or now WTC, they do a differential where they take the score, the difference, and then it gives you a certain score out of zero to twenty, and then they then they go. They take the difference in the team scores and determines whether it's a win, loss, or draw. Hmm. So, so for, and like I said, FLG went with the straight win loss just to keep it simple, especially for newer players. Because, and and that's essentially what happened. We got a lot of people coming by saying how much they enjoyed the tournament, and that it wasn't just them. Like it's not just hey, this is my first tournament. It was like the whole team's first tournament. Right. Well, that's I cool. Was, which yeah. I thought was kind of cool. That is very cool. So, it, and I think the so format that, lends itself to that because the format is simpler. Yeah. Yeah, it's more it straightforward. It it's simpler. It's not like a, hey, how do we win games? Well, there's this crazy like algorithm to follow to win games and bring your skew lists. And this is like, hey, how do we win games? You win games. Oh, <laughs> no, I, okay, cool. <laughs> I think it's also important because uh, Brandon Grant mentioned this on Focus Fire, which has a great kind of like the team, our team's experience, uh, hashtag Rex experience there. But he was talking about like, you know, it was easy. He enjoyed it because it was just easy in the middle of the game to kind of do the math of like, okay, 
Jeff has told me that he won, this person won, right? That he doesn't have to think about like, oh crap, okay, what was the score? What do I need to score to make sure we're going to win, right? right? Like blah, blah, blah. It's just like, cool. Okay, two people won. I need to make sure to win my game and we're good, right? Like that's all I need to do is win my game. Win your game. Um, Win games. Have fun. He also pointed out from, um, which I hadn't totally thought about, but it totally makes sense from his uh, from his play style, is that um, when the you know you've really got to rack up the points, you can't play conservatively. Of like, you know what, I'm ninety percent going to win this game. It's not going to be a big. It's not going to be a blowout. I'm going to win seventy to fifty, but it's a ninety percent versus like fuck. I got to try and get a hundred points, and that lowers me down to maybe it's only a fifty percent win rate if I'm going full out like this. So it actually makes it easier to win your you know. It makes it easier to win your games if you're a more conservative um, player because, like, you don't have to go for the blowout. You can just go for it. This is going to probably win. It's not going to be flashy and exciting, but it's going to win. <laughs> sure, that makes sense. Right. Yeah. So, so there. So it was a uh, like we said a lower barrier of entry in terms of like learning learning the the team tournament format. So yeah. um, it seems like they enjoyed it. I know they'll probably have it again next year. I don't know if they're gonna have another like a second team tournament type event i know because new orleans is a regular championship event so we'll we'll see because they probably i think they have more are we going to discuss your your bad judge call Oof. which one are we going to compare a bad judge call because we can go there i don't have any bad judge calls from the last (laughs) two weeks oh my god from the last two weeks i got none okay okay you want you want to discuss devout push No, because that's not going to be a thing by next week. So who cares? <laughs> how convenient for you. Yeah, whatever. I don't care. How about try? How about helping when I ask a question? Oof. Helping? I did help. I laughed because it was ridiculous, and then you went the wrong way. <laughs> it was so, so preposterous. I was like, "What?" <laughs> okay, whatever. Anyway, it's forty k. Nothing's preposterous. I know, right? I mean, I guess that's kind of true. We we do have whitey <laughs> boys, a meme, yeah. <laughs> and we have Chonk Marine. <laughs> God, hey, 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 protect Chonk Marine at all costs. Dude, Chonk, Chonk <laughs> Marine's an absolute unit. I am so mad he can't throw the holy hand grenade. Oh no, he can't. <laughs> no, because it's not for characters; it's only for units. Oh, too bad. Oh, uh, so in the in the end, uh, surprise, surprise, Art of War. When you have the all the best players on one team, kind right. of reminds me of the '92 Olympics basketball team, U.S. Men's oh, basketball right, yeah. team, <laughs> <laughs> the dream team. For those that don't remember or weren't born yet, I prefer my dream team with time. Magic Johnson. Yeah, that's what I'm talking mm-hmm. about. Oh no, you're talking about the college '80s dream team. No, there's another dream team that was after, and that one was with uh, Jordan and Shaq was on it. We don't care about that, but one. I prefer we, the we Jordan about the Bird first one. Magic one. Yeah. I mean, the second one with Jordan was good too. Let's not cut it short. Like, yeah, but what's, what was funny was the reason for the first one. The reason for the first one is because the because before it used to just be college players that right. went uh, to the Olympics for the right. yeah. for the uh, then then one year they lost or or they got only got only got a silver I think it was right. something like that. And the pros went nah. <laughs> yeah, this is America. <laughs> and then that somehow. Was and then somehow the rules changed. <laughs> so somehow, that, <laughs> magically, the pros. The we'll pros never know why. To, we'll we'll never know. Yeah. Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, and Larry Bird literally dunking on the world. <laughs> yeah, that was ba- that was basically it. I remember watching those Dream Team games and being like, "Good God!" <laughs> yeah, it's like this isn't actually fair. <laughs> yeah, it's like a so that, like that... Larry the King Lawler at WWE. But God, he's already dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So that was that. That's how I see like the Art of War team, you know. Yeah. So, no, that was. It, it. I mean, it's it, it's not that they like they had an easy role because I believe they pay, played against like the Battle Brothers. Uh, I know uh, uh, Pro Tabletop was there because our t- our team hashtag Rec played against them in the last round. Uh, I think I think they I played Advanced that Warfare. Changed his name to like Tabletop. It's Pro Light. Tabletop. I no, it's Pro changed. Tabletop. I thought that no, that well, that was. I thought the they team. got back into the Halo business. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you mean Scam Life? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I just thought that they were a big uh, Halo enthusiast at some point. I don't know. 
Uh, no, I thought they changed their name to like Tabletop Light or Tabletop Life. No, it's Tabletop, tabletop Life. Strife. But the uh, it's Tabletop Life. That's the new. That's the rebrand. But the team name was Pro Tabletop. So there's still a team for a defunct company. Yes, because they have the shirts. They have to use them. Are they planning to run another <laughs> event at some point, or did they just do the one and done? They just did the one and done because I know a few a few stores got their got a hold of their stuff. Like they just sold the stuff to. We're gonna put together the greatest tabletop experience of all time. <laughs> it's gonna be super professional. We have all this custom terrain. It's gonna be the best setups ever. One well, time. This is gonna. <laughs> this is gonna change the game. This is gonna redefine how 40k is played on the competitive level. Have uh-huh. one tournament. Sell, sell, sell. <laughs> Ban <Banish> ship. <laughs> I mean, the tournament was fine, I guess, but maybe it just wasn't what they expected. Uh, yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> So, so over the course of the, of the weekend, we had a few we had a few things come up. Uh, there were a lot of questions, not even about. There were a lot of questions about devout push, uh, fight first, fight. How you got last. wrong. Okay. <laughs> fight first is a consistent issue. The fight first rules, they need to like figure out two wordings, put them into every FAQ and errata, and call it a day. Because it's a consistent I mean, the, the, issue. The, the designer commentary helped a little, but there were still questions, especially in yeah. regards to the uh, interrupt strat. Or fight first literally shouldn't exist as a thing. Because wow. it's so confusing. Well, it's that plus the different wordings of fight last. I mean, that's really more of what it is. It's just they've never... I mean, they're starting, I think, to get a little more consistent, yeah. but it's definitely not been consistent, especially across like the 8th edition codexes of like, here's the exact language you use for this rule. Right, so that it's just clear and it's easy to FAQ any, um, you know, any issues with. Or it. maybe if you're going to have fight first, you shouldn't have a fight last. No, I mean I think they're interesting mechanics. I think they're important mechanics, but um, I just they they need to. I mean, really, it's one of those things that they need a style guide. Like they actually need to have a game design bible of if you're going to do this rule, it needs to be worded exactly this way. Right, and you can't deviate from that. And that's yeah. someone's job is to just look yeah. at the rules and make sure they're in line with the style guide. In, in programming, they call that you have a workbook, right? And, and in the workbook, you can't deviate from what's in it. Yeah. Something like that, right? They need like a wording yeah. workbook for them, almost like a programming one, so that you can't yeah. deviate from the, from the set. Well, again, in writing, and whether it's, you know, like creative or um, technical writing, you generally have, you have a style guide, and the style guide is what tells you how to say things. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, you if you're going to if you're going to say one thing, you have to, you know, if you want to say this idea, you have to say it like this. Right. Like, that's just how we do. So I, I really don't get the sense they have that or if they do that, it's really strictly followed and enforced. Like, I don't think they have a compliance officer who just like job is to look at the new rules and be like, this is follow the style. Guy. <clears throat> yeah, the, yeah. I mean, probably not. I mean, and to be fair, that's a very niche job. It's, you know, but it's it's an important <laughs> one. I can think yeah. of a couple of hyper pedants who would like that job. Yeah, I mean, there's certainly <laughs> people who are who are built for that. None of whom are sitting in, in this podcast right now. I'll tell you that. <laughs> no, we're not, not pedantic That's enough good. for this. No, I mean, earlier this week we had a discussion of what vaccine means and how it's applied. Oh my god, yes, we did. It was the worst. <laughs> Wait, what? you missed out on that, Danny. You missed out Don't on you? that, Danny. You didn't come out to the bar. Oh my god. <laughs> really? <laughs> mm. well, they're here, they they might have some so fun of them some more. It was um, other, other... <laughs> It was. I, we digress. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, just watching his head explode. Um, <laughs> but uh, the other other issues. Uh, so we use player place terrain, which and uh, we had player optimized. Uh, player optimized. Sorry. Player hey, optimized placement. Damn, bro! Before I haven't pop. even judged one of these events yet, and I know to use the correct nomenclature. See, he's following the style guide. There you go. <laughs> the unofficial one. I'm a good little soldier. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. Am I carry, go I'm going to carry that flag to you the gates of hell. <laughs> it's the German blood. Um, <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> uh, so with the with the player optimized terrain or player optimized placement, we 
issues came up in regards to if there weren't wasn't enough room to place a, a piece of terrain it was basically you make you basically make room you just fudge the other terrain pieces a little bit yeah. there's uh, enough room the, the tables are not that crowded guys i know i mean but it, can... it, the way the way they place it, it and i've seen it it's come up before when we were practicing it for uh, hammer of wrath lies uh just to see how many pieces of terrain to put on each table did it come and, up at uh, hammer of wrath no, it didn't. Uh, it did once, but it's just really just. And I asked when I asked Reese about it. It's just you can. Uh, Was Frankie, the person that came like, up with it Hammer of Wrath Allen? <laughs> no, he wasn't. Okay. It wasn't Allen. All right. <laughs> you you basically have to just fudge the terrain so you can fit the the piece that's the last piece. Um, instead, what people were doing, they were basically either hiding the terrain under the table, <laughs> either because it. I heard fit, that was just they, a mistake, not for real. Or, well, either because it wouldn't fit or, and I'll give them the benefit of doubt, that it, it just maybe didn't fit and they didn't know what to do with it and they didn't bother asking us. Fair enough. So we, had, we may, did make an announcement that if it kept on happening, we'd have to start carding both teams because we, <laughs> we, didn't, we, didn't, we wouldn't know who, who did it. And I'm I think that's going to gonna carry over into, uh, <laughs> into a SoCal Open. Um. We did have there's just just as in most tournaments where there's those one or two players that you keep having to go to their tables. The same thing happened with, with at least one team. We had to keep on going to their tables, or we were getting uh, uh, complaints about. But it wasn't that bad. But it was still kind of. Uh, you didn't give out any red cards. It, no reds, uh, yellows, but no reds. <laughs> so. Seems like some missed opportunities, huh? <laughs> well, I wasn't at, I wasn't the judge there when it happened, so. Like, Boo. And then the other the other issue was um G, uh Frontline had determined or had made one of the terrain pieces or most of the terrain pieces obscuring, which included a terrain piece that had no that was just a flat piece of uh of terrain. There was no trees, there was nothing on it, mm-hmm. and that was that was obscuring. So we had a lot of questions of not even Kind of that that question of like, is it really like this? Because yeah. it's only like two inches tall. Because reading is hard. Because well, it's, yeah, well, it's more comprehension than the reading part. They read it, but it's kind of like it. It's really supposed to be like that, and they were like, yeah, that's what it says. And they just more don't believe you. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, so <laughs> nope, there was a lot I don't of that. You. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that that was basically it. There was. The event itself went pretty smooth. Our team actually came in third uh, overall. And got Renman, right? But, but they got mm-hmm. number one, first place for Renman, on, basically on the back of um, Derek. Derek. Derek and his samurai, who was who was offered like six thousand dollars for the army, like at there and there, right, right there and then. And I cannot believe he did not take it because I'd be like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, if well, you actually had the cash in front of me or I could see that my PayPal balance suddenly shift. like you, yeah. you can take this home right now. Here, take the tray. Go, shove it in yep. your arms. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, well, I, I think no they were still backsies. discussing it afterwards. <laughs> so I don't know if, if it was sold because it, it was also the possibility of selling like the other stuff that he was still working on. Mm. So, yeah, I'd ask Derek. I'd have to ask Derek when he – because I believe Derek is going to SoCal. So I'll ask I will ask Derek, how much money well, did you make? Well, if he shows up with his samurai Deathwing army, we'll know. <laughs> well, maybe it's the last well, draw. If he does sell that, then all he has left are his knights. So if he shows up with knights, that means he sold it. <laughs> yeah. I'm showing up with knights. I, mean, I would have sold it. But I'm showing up with um, knights because I can't play my space wolf army because it makes my soul hurt. <laughs> <laughs> did it, didn't you get so excited, though, for whatever it was, the fang in a, a hammer and bolter? Oh yeah, it was really good. Yeah, yeah. I figured you would just play love the that. army. It's out now, right? Yeah. Yes. Cool. Okay. It came out. I got to stuff. watch it on Saturday at at uh, the New Orleans Open. It was really good. Yeah, we know you're special. No, because they got to watch it at Gen Con first, so I'm not that special. I'm pretty sure <laughs> they previewed Gen it at Gen Con. Gen Con special. Yeah. I mean, it was great. It was it was fun to see the Space Wolves and not like you know. A lot, sometimes a lot of Space Marine stuff is very, like, Ultramarine or kind of more generic Space yeah. Marines. So yeah. I've enjoyed the Blood Angels um, mm-hmm. series and then, like, this having, like, a focus on the Space Wolves of the kind of, and it was know, like more no characterful. Or initiates, yeah. I mean. Yeah. And just a more characterful um, flavor of Space Marine. And it was the first time they had three, like, 
actual characters in it, like known characters, right? Yeah, I mean the uh, what is it? Um, in uh, Blood of Ball, Mephiston shows up. He has like a you know yeah. little like two. Oh, cameo. I just meant the Hammer and Bolter. Oh, Hammer and Bolter. Yeah, those yeah. are for or no Grasskull. I mean, Grass oh Cole's yeah, that's right. The very Yark's first one had Gosgul and um, Yark. 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 Yeah, that's right. I forgot but, about that. <clears throat> no, it was it was cool. I enjoyed it. It was mm-hmm. it showed how much it sucks to be a space marine and how if someone's <laughs> like, man, I'd be a space marine, I'd be like, no, you, no, you wouldn't. And if it sucks <laughs> to be a space marine, it like double sucks to be a space wolf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, I did this thing. Yes. Cool. Go with that dude and like do whatever while we finish our mule. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> here's here's a not even real clap on the back. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, dude, I'm drinking and playing chess with my friends here, so why don't you come back later? Yeah. <laughs> Now's not a good time for me, but I, I I just killed this fucking monster and walked through the freezing cold in, like, no clothes, and I, I might be dying. Yeah, what did I say? <laughs> <laughs> right, these are so, so the event was, was actually really fun, pretty good. Uh, it, was, it was nice seeing everybody again. Uh, there was a lot of people there that I hadn't seen in a long time, so... It was, it was a lot of fun. Um, like I said, uh, we our team came in third. Art of War came in came in first, and I forgot who came in second. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, that's too bad. <laughs> um, so that that was a uh, Las Vegas team tournament. They're probably gonna. I don't know if they'll have it at the same venue next year, but uh, we'll see. Or more events, but for the first time, it was it was pretty good. I think they're gonna keep it the format. They, they like the way it is. So. I think it makes the most sense. I've never been a big fan of the WTC, ETC, whatever you want to call it, the, format. The differential. Yeah, because I think it just, it it rewards, I mean, it's just a different game. It just becomes like you're playing a kind of mo- a heavy mod of 40K, where it's just there's all of a sudden very different rules and army compositions and strategy and tactics that just aren't actually applicable to the game. So it's, you know, you're just playing this very niche subset of the game as opposed to, you know, playing in a tournament with your friends where it's like, okay, can you build a team where three out of five guys are going to win every round? Right. And there's still the there's still the special, like, strategy and tactics of who's who, who do you put on attacker defender, right? Like, you know, how do you do your matchups? All that kind of stuff, and I think it's really important. Um, but this the actual, like, well... Okay, I have to build lists that are going to twenty o people. I have to build lists that can't get twenty o'd. It's never going to win, but it can't get twenty. You know, it can't give up max right. points when it loses, right? Like that's just I don't think all that exciting. Yeah, I'm not. I'm I'm personally not a big fan of team tournaments, but that's just me. Same. Um, but that's John, fine because uh, there's plenty of people who want to play them. So, right. Yeah, and there there seems to be more, uh, more being being made. Uh, There's nothing wrong with having something for everybody in the community. It's okay. <clears throat> no. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just it's also not every format is for you, right? right? Like, I mean, I'm not that I don't think I ever had the time to invest to be good enough to be like, hey, you should play on Team America. But well, assuming I would, I'd still be like, I don't really want to because that's not a format I typically enjoy. So, right. Yeah. I'm right. sure I would the, the, be a shit member of Team America. <laughs> Not necessarily because I'm not a good player, but because, like, that whole format, I'd be like, wait, I have to dive on this one? I don't understand. Well, they st- I mean, that's still a thing, even with the with the yeah. win-loss format. We did have an issue with the draws, because some people de- did get a tie. And the other issue with BCP, and the other issue with BCP was that towards the end of the tournament, it kept on giving the people who had... Um, more battle points to win instead of the team that won three games. Interesting. So, oh, right. So yeah. A team, yeah, so a team would win three games but score less battle points. Right. Right. Interesting. So, okay. But it, luckily they, they, were, they were easy to get a hold of and they corrected everything, so it was fine. The one thing I did like about the team tournament is if I had an issue, if there was an issue with a player, I talked to the coach or captain instead right. of the player. And let them let them deal with their problem. <laughs> the what problem, if the problem was the coach or the captain? Well, then I'll t- then you know then I talk to them. But until then, I well I talk to them either way. Right. But, you know. So either way, you got to talk to them. Yeah, uh, we did have an incident of a miscommunication in one of the rulings. So, uh, because of because we were accepting email questions. Was the ruling and... about push? No, it was about uh, 
Dark Eldar's. It's a, it was a Dark Eldar stratagem. <sighs> so, <laughs> so one one of the judges he sent an email back one way. I answered the question in the form because it was a also sent way. as a form, and it was the and it was a different way. And we went with the form because the form was there for everybody, as opposed to the email, who was only for that one person. Question: so. Can I play Dark Eldar without feeling bad? Answer: No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put that in. Um, <laughs> so should that be for Admac? It should be. It should really be for Admac and not. Yeah. Can I play Orc War Buggies and not feel bad? No. <laughs> also, so applies. for like, I watch for, those for SoCal action. Open, and probably for the for future events, we're probably only we're only going to take uh, so the inquiry from the website as opposed to taking. Questions through email or messenger, as some people. Yeah, it should do. only be through the form. If you can't figure out how to yeah. do the form, you don't get your answer. Yeah, <laughs> like so. it's not hard, guys. It's a Google form. So it makes my students good. use it for tests. You can do it. <laughs> so John was at uh, New Orleans Open for uh, Games Workshop. I was. Uh, how was the How was the venue? Because it was a few. I think a few weeks after the hurricane hit, or month. Month. Yeah. Later. So the venue was great. Um, the venue was full of like linemen and plumbers and stuff who were working on getting the city back together and back up and running. Um, some of the stuff we drove by on the way in from the uh, hotel or from the airport, you could see the, like, there were still trees that were downed or like people's like fences Mm -hmm. that were down and stuff. Um, some of the roofs still had like the blue tarpaulins on it, you know, to, to keep the water out. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, like. Where we were, right across from the Superdome, it was all fine. Uh, the Superdome, they played the Saints game in it on Sunday, and I couldn't go. <laughs> <laughs> like, I literally, my room, I looked out over the Superdome, and I was like, man. what? So close, yet so hell? far. <laughs> yeah. um, but For yeah, those that ve- don't know, John, John is a Saints fan. I'm a Saints fan. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the, the venue was awesome. It was at a Hyatt Regency, which are nice hotels to begin with, and they had a nice big room. Um, people kept kept telling me all weekend it was the room was very similar to Nova, mm-hmm. like the, okay. uh, the Nova open like layout. It was very similar, and I was like, "Well, I don't know what you're talking about. I never went." <laughs> yeah, I've only and they're been like, one. "Oh yeah, that's right. You never went to one." I was like, "No, I never went to one." Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was nice. The hotel was nice. The hotel had like a Starbucks in it that was right by the where we were. It had a restaurant and a bar right by where we were. Um, one night they opened up a restaurant that was actually closed just for us to use to do the oh, screening wow. and stuff and, and trivia night. Um, the elevators to and from the rooms, literally right outside the event hall. So you, oh, nice. you just like walked right out to your elevator up to your rooms and stuff. It was cool. Um, it was, um, yeah, it was awesome. The, the, the venue was really cool. Um, we went out to the French Quarter a couple of times. K.R. Quinn asked if I had actual good food or just tourist stuff. And no, I had people <laughs> who were like had been there before, and like or people who lived there like give recommendations mm-hmm. and stuff. So I, I got to see, see cool stuff, do cool stuff, drink cool stuff, eat cool stuff. So that was that was nice. Once my like ten hour day was over. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the format was the same as the Orlando Open. It's brackets. So, if, Or if you ever played at Nova, it's similar. Yeah. So you play four games. <clears throat> the end of the four games, you get put into brackets with people of similar records. Four and oh, three and ones, two and ones, one and twos, oh and threes, or oh and fours, whatever it is. Um, so you get, you get put into brackets with them, and then you play for prizes amongst your brackets, which is cool because... I feel like the, the format does a couple things. One, it allows people to like continue playing and feel like they still have a chance to win something, which is important. Um, right. The other reason it's nice is that once you're put into the brackets at the end of day two, if you don't want to play in your bracket day three for your last two games, like, cool, go see whatever city you're in. Like, all the cities the U.S. Opens are in are cool cities. Orlando's great. You don't want to play Sunday? Awesome. Go to <laughs> Universal Studios Orlando or go to, like, Disney World, go to, right? Yeah. Go to Epcot, um, baby. Yeah. Or if uh, <laughs> in, in New Orleans, there was so much stuff to do. I was like, oh, man, I wish I could, like, take Sunday off and go wander around New Orleans <laughs> instead of be stuck watching these stream games. <laughs> um, but the stream games are actually really good, so I don't mind watching because 
I, those of you who don't judge probably don't realize if you can sit and watch really good players play games as a judge, you learn a lot. Like I feel like my ninth ed game increased a lot just from being able to judge Orlando and like watch people play. You um, definitely started doing better after Orlando. I did. Um, and then so the, yeah, so it's cool if you want to leave. And then the next one's U.S. Open in Austin. Austin's a great town too. Like I know it's not usually thought of as like a touristy town, but Austin's a cool town. Oh, it's got a lot of awesome stuff. I've been there before. <laughs> um, so like I think that format's really nice. It, and it's and you know, something a lot of people don't realize is a lot of these events draw mostly locals, right? Yeah, right. Which is something that like the TOs have had internal discussions about for a long time. But like your GT, your major even is generally drawing locals. We oftentimes think that like oh it's the people who travel for it who but that's because you see the same ones because the same ones always travel. So right. like. But they don't make up the majority of the people. Like, the majority of the people at Orlando, the majority of the people at the U.S. Open in um, New Orleans were locals, which is also really cool. Because, like, you get people out to play. Who We had a lot of people at, at um, both Orlando and New Orleans who were like, this is my first tournament ever. And mm-hmm. we're like, awesome. That's really cool. And they had great games and had fun. So Yeah, um, that's something. Good. I was going to say, you know, I've been doing some data crunching for a uh, an article at some point soon um, about, you know, ITC and things like that. And, you know, it's kind of shocking when, you know, there's about nine, there's about 9,200, um, sc- you know, people who have scored ITC points this, this season. And really, if you take, if you consider like an active like player, like, you know, four, you know, have four or more scores. That's only 1,500. I mean, that's less than 1,500, right? So the vast majority of, you know, people who play in ITC tournaments are people who play once or twice an entire season, right? Um, and so, like, there's actually a relatively small pool of traveling players who, like, are, like, consistently going out and, like, getting, you know, are willing to travel to do four or five events. Yeah. I mean... <clears throat> When you think about it this way, I'm one of those players. Yeah, I don't travel here. to events outside of the West. Like yeah. the furthest I've ever traveled to play 40K is Austin. The, when yeah, I went nice. to War Games yeah. Con one year. The, to, to judge 40K, the furthest I've ever gone is Orlando. Orlando, New Orleans now, last weekend. And then obviously LVO. But oh, Las Vegas isn't far, right? Right. Yeah. Las Vegas is a four-hour drive for us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or a 40-minute plane ride. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I'm flying this year because Natalie wants to go and she likes to fly. Right. Uh, okay. We'll see if that pans out. I don't know. You <laughs> never know. Yeah, I have to I have to see about my uh, schedule with the fam of if I fly or drive. Or I think one year I did both where I... I, I, I did, yeah. Yeah, I drove, drove in and, and flew out. And flew out, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And just took an Uber home. As far as Which common questions to... and issues went for me... There wasn't really a thread other than the terrain thing, which is true for any major event, right? So you're always going to get common questions about terrain, no matter if you're doing player-optimized terrain or if you're doing um, uh, the the GW terrain setups that we had. You're not going to – you're going to have a lot of questions about, hey, is this thing set up this way? Uh, are Are you supposed to be able to see through this terrain or not? Uh, is this window supposed to be boarded up or not? Did it pop off? You know, stuff like that. So those kinds of questions are pretty common. But other than that, sure. there wasn't a lot of common questions. Like most people knew their stuff and didn't need any help. So, no, that's good. That's good to hear. The winners were uh, again, Richard Siegler won the open. Um, he played Bradchester on the top table, and uh, it was eighty-four to eighty-two. Jesus. Yeah. Super close <laughs> game, even though they ended up only playing to like turn four because Chester ended up losing all of his models. Um, <laughs> it was still 84 82. It was crazy. I was watching that game most of the time. So <clears throat> the first rounds, Justin Curtis was watching, and then Justin had to catch his plane home. So the second round, Sunday, I watched the stream tables. Um, oh, okay. As the, as the main judge, the three stream tables. So. That's good to know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the next one you're doing is, is Austin. 
correct? I am so yes. As long as my my work schedule and everything stays the same, I will be doing Austin. Yes. Okay. When is that? Uh, that is the weekend before Thanksgiving. No. Okay. Yeah. So there's a lot of like moving parts to that one. I'm as of now. Yeah. I'm supposed. <laughs> yes. Uh, so if you happen to be in Austin, make sure to say hi to John. He'll appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would feed that feed that ego. It's not an ego thing. I just like people. <laughs> yeah. I, I got to talk. So Go Boy came to New Orleans. I got to hang out with him. I was yes. like Go Boy. He's great. And he oh, did yeah. well with his Grey Knights too. Oh, that's cool. He was playing five Dread Knights. That was, seems to be. I think it was uh, three Grandmasters, two Normals. So it was good. I enjoyed it. That yeah, seems to be a popular build. build. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Carlos didn't. I think he took like one Grandmaster and a bunch of regular guys, with even Rhinos, for his yeah, list. Yeah, but it's Carlos. Carlos has some type of voodoo and does well with no matter what. <laughs> now, Carlos just plays a very – he plays a very different game than most people do. Because um, European. So he builds less for different, yes. <laughs> well, he really builds for the – he builds for the missions in mind, right? Like he is not like – he actually rare – I've never actually seen him pilot a list that's like designed with I just table you like that's what I do. It's always like, okay, here's how I not die, and here's how I score, I win over the course of five turns. <laughs> right. Yeah, Carlos. Carlos actually met another Spaniard while at the team tournament. <laughs> did you have to play him? Uh, he didn't play him. Wait, did he? No, he didn't. He didn't play him. But it, it was it's the it was the captain of the uh, pro tabletop team. I would mm. love to watch Carlos play another Spaniard. They don't play each other, but... And if that ever happens, we have to make sure they put it on stream. And they have to be mic'd. <laughs> oh, my God. With a translator? With you a don't need the translator. Maybe. You just got to, you know, when you play it back and you watch it, you just play it back at half speed. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to kill us for this. He's no, no. <laughs> he knows it's true. That's why. Yeah. He'd be like, oh, yeah, those motherfuckers. <laughs> You just say that a lot faster. Yeah. Um, so the next event coming up, uh, at least for me, and well, actually for all of us, is uh, SoCal Open. Yep. I will be there judging. Lame. And, uh, you got too old Keith. for us, Adam. You got too old. You don't play no more. <laughs> I only play in RTTs. I only lose in RTTs. I, I'll I'm lose in sure. RTTs and majors, too. I don't, I'll lose no matter what. I just want to play. <laughs> yeah. I like judging. Um, and and uh, actually, Keith from our from our team is actually helping helping with French? the judging. He helped with the Las Vegas Keith French. Nice. Uh, he actually helped with the Las Vegas tournament. Um, oh, really? Yeah. His, his well, he used to play War Machine competitive War oh, Machine. Yes, I, I know Keith. <laughs> so, what's well, more for the audience, Danny? I know you know. Yeah. <laughs> don't um, don't tell Danny about his friends. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Danny, you Keith know this guy one of the Keith? Best. Yeah, Keith has a. I swear, one of the best. Uh, I mean, Travis, you talked about of um, when we went to Travis and I and a bunch of us went to uh, Lock and Load, the big, uh, the big like company tournament from Privateer Press one year. And Keith and Travis had a hilarious story of uh, going basically like ditching the last day and being like, "We're going to go get brunch and we're going to go do all this fun thing." And then like Keith, <laughs> who had traveled with his friend Dan, was just like, "Yo, what the hell, man!" Like, it honestly, looked like hurt, like. What do you mean you, you, you went out without me? <laughs> Dan Osborne? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it was hilarious. I mean, obviously, it was, yeah, he got over it. Also, awesome. phenomenal, Dan, phenomenal painter. So, yes. so Keith was, Keith, Keith's uh, reason for judging was like, he can do five rounds. He can't do, but he, that's all he, that's all he's good for. He can't do more than six rounds. So, playing. and a lot of these, he can be there to play. judge the whole weekend, but playing. Oh, yeah. Um, and, uh, so he decided to just, just start judging. So he started with with the Vegas. He's going with he's going with us or with me. He's judging with me at SoCal. Um, That'd be cool. I haven't seen him since the plague, so that'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I gotta get that shirt. I gotta get that meme made into a shirt so I can wear it at SoCal Open. I yeah, seen I mean since the plague. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a great line. So uh, I, I'll be how apropos that became very quickly. Seriously, like, oh, yeah. good lord. 
So I'll be judging. Uh, if you do have questions, send them through the form uh, on Frontline. It's on the player packet. You Please send, send him the email. worst questions ever so he has to answer them. Oh, I already have them. There's a whole list tomorrow that I have to send the chat. Are, no. <laughs> are they, are they, were they, were they uh, given to you in orc speak? N- no, but that, I have gotten those for conversions. Oh, I'm, I'm sure you have. <laughs> the wogging, and the, qu- the wogging and the, at, the, at the U.S. Open was nuts. Oh, I can imagine. One person would wog on one side, and it was like a wog wave across the convention oh, yeah. hall. <laughs> there were a I've lot of work players, and there were a lot of very enthusiastic work players there. And That's yeah. kind of most work players. Yeah. Um, I mean, depending how drunk I get at SoCal, I might be very enthusiastically uh, blood for the blood <laughs> godding. Yes. You'll be the only one. You can yeah, you can yell at all yell skulls through the skull throne. Yeah, see? <laughs> Just call it a little call and response. It Maybe really depends on, it. on if I've lost the game yet, whether or not <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be in the mood for that if you catch my drift. Yeah. <laughs> So you're you're gonna be playing Chaos Marco Polo then? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Except I'm not gonna be playing Chaos Knights. I'm playing Imperial Knights. <laughs> no, but I mean in terms of blood for the blood god. Oh yeah. Skulls for the skull. That'll be just how John asks for a drink. He'll be like, oh, "Blood for the blood god." One of the other. Throne, he'll be like, "Oh fuck, he needs a drink." <laughs> one of the other GW judges, Zach Rockner. Do you know him, Danny? Mm-mm, I don't think so. He's a huge world eaters player too. Loves oh, world eaters. Cool. Oh, good. Well, he's a man of culture and taste. If he comes to LVL, make sure you guys meet. He's he's also yeah. a really good guy. I like him. Um. Yeah. So the yeah, I have a lot. I still have more questions about Ardent Shroud. So. Oh, shocking! What's wrong with Ardent Shroud? Well, basically about remaining stationary. I have a Salamander's one and a because uh, of that Strat. Uh, and the uh, Ardent Shroud issue. So you type the word N-O, and you highlight it, <laughs> and you press Control-C, and then for every question that comes in, you press Control-V. <laughs> that sounds about right. LVO, I mean, he's out of line. LVO right. Ruling 101 by Salty John. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ironically, or unironically, that's exactly how I do all my conversion approvals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit more lenient because me. I don't care about conversions as much, to be honest. Um, but uh, John, so you talked about it a little bit already. What are you taking to SoCal? I will be taking Imperial Knights, Imperial, and I have a lot of Imperial Knights, but it turns out know. that I'm going to be building five more <laughs> 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 to run the list I want. I own. Let's see, I've got three up there, two in my case over there. I've got two at the store, big knights, right? And then I've got five little knights painted at the store, plus the one Danny has on the, my tray. That's technically yeah. like the TF. So my knights are painted TFG colors with TFG decals. They're like the the podcast knights. The podcast knights. And Danny and Adam have both, or Danny and Tom have both contributed knights too, also to the cause. Um. But I still need to do two Magaras. I need to do a weapon for the Preceptor. And then also okay. I need to do three actual Moraxes. Because the Moraxes I have were conversion ones from before they existed. So if you remember back in 8th, they released the Moraxes but then didn't release models for a while. So I converted two yeah, of them. They released the rules, not yeah. the models. Right. So I converted two Helverians slash Armagers. By cutting off arms and magnetizing. And then making what I thought the weapons would look like. And actually my lightning locks are actually pretty close. They are. I, I, I um, mean, I think you could use those without any issue. Well, I have I have six more axes I need to build anyways. And since I'm taking three with lightning locks and I have three with the actual lightning locks, I'm just going to build them. Mm-hmm. Plus, okay. it's never bad to have an excuse to build and pay models. I guess. I'm and uh, I'm, I'm not going to do... A house. I'm going to do a free blade detachment. Free blades. And the free blade detachment's got a little bit of tech to it to help me try to win some games I might otherwise not. It's similar to the list Harpster, <laughs> Jack Harpster took to the New Orleans Open. And did well. He only lost, I think, one game, maybe two. Um, he did really well with it. I really like the list. Um, given certain circumstances and with player-optimized terrain, I think I can actually do fairly well with it. 
Um, Knights are pretty strong in the current meta. Not a lot of people tech into T8. Um, right. A lot of people Especially tech into like T8. low toughness. And if I've got three big knights with 24 wounds each that are hopped up and ready to go, plus many knights, I think I can probably put the hurt on a couple armies. So, um, Plus, I've gotten much better with them since I went 0-3 or 0-3. I think I went 0 3 to RTT, right? And then I went 1 and 4 at <laughs> Hammer Wrath. Uh, I thought you went 1 and 2. I think, yeah, I think you're right. I think I went 1 and 2 and 1 and 4 with them. Something and then like I went that. 2 and no, Hammer Rath 2 and 1 at RTT with Edwin's Deathwing Army. <laughs> yes. But I, I th- I'm confident <laughs> I can do fairly well depending on matchups. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's what well, with the with the player, player optimized placement, I should help mitigate some of the matchups and yes. make them a little more manageable, hopefully. Probably. And the Magaras are like insane. Oh, Magaras are so good. If I had a third one, I'd just run three. Like, mm-hmm. I'd literally probably just copy Jack Harpster's list from the US Open in mm-hmm. New Orleans if I had a third Magara, but I only have two. They're both unbuilt. Oh. They've been sitting around for forever, unbuilt. <laughs> <laughs> so now I have a reason to build and paint them. Yep. All right. So everyone look forward to John's uh, nine and O performance at uh, SoCal Open. Yeah, heard right here first. Okay, sure. Uh-huh. <laughs> Not even I'm going to try to make that claim. <laughs> Danny, what are you yeah. taking? I am playing pure 100% world eaters, um, which really is I'm playing three king of beers, so three lord of skulls. <laughs> Speaking of, no one texts into T8. Um, so I've got three models at T8 and 28 wounds each with a 5-plus in bowl. <laughs> um, put out a decent amount of shooting. Uh, if you, I don't know if anyone actually ever does, but if anyone listening reads my uh, articles on Sundays at Frontline, I've been kind of detailing the list and like my thoughts on it. Um, and I'll have another one up this weekend. Um, but, you know, like it's a, uh, I played, I don't want to say like five or six games with a version of at least, you know, a version of the list. Um, mm-hmm. The core is the three, you know, three guys. And, you know, I've actually come to really like it. It's uh, it's three Lord of Skulls and then a patrol, world eater patrol of um, Karn for the, he has a, a reroll aura that's only one inch, but it's, you know, it's reroll all failed hits. So it's not just the ones. And he's a beast in combat. Um, and only 115 points. And then a Termi Lord, who's my Warlord with Violent Urgency. So the plus one to advanced charge for, for you know, war leaders within six of him. And uh, Gore Father, which is basically a Thunder Hammer that can do mortal wounds. Right. And uh, and then six, uh, six Red Butchers with uh, double lightning claws who just fucking annihilate anything they hit. Um, those guys are, God, for like 170 points are just insane even with only two wounds instead of three and then three squads of bros with uh you know minimum bros with chain axes or chain swords who just kind of hide and you know give me some infantry on the ground to play the uh, mission a little bit and who you know against chaff actually do really well because they're basically primaris on the charge um so you know um what um, they they can do a little bit of work (laughs) And how many? How, I know you're playing a bunch of practice games. How many? How have they, how have they been doing in the practice games? Uh, I am. I think I'm four and one or five and one with them. I think my only loss I can remember is um, against Allen. Okay. Um, with thousand his thousand sons, sons yeah, ones? thousand sons. I got close okay. with my space wolves. <laughs> yes, you very nice. And Tommy came very close with his um, with his uh, SoCal list, which is a Gil- dreadnought heavy Gilliman gun line. Too bad um, and we that played was horseshoes. It would have counted. Yeah, I mean, well, it's it was one of the things of uh, if we play that matchup again, I think he wins, um, just because he made a pretty big mistake and opened up a, a really good hole for uh, my red butchers to get in, and start gutting him, mm-hmm. and by the time he cleared them out, it's like, well, I've still got two of these, you know, guys, and you're going to kill one more, but you're not killing the last one. I'm going to start winning though, and I started winning the mission. I literally disengage. Yeah. I'm like, cool. As Makes long as sense. I don't feed him kills, I win. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I think in my practice game with John, which wasn't his actual list, but uh, something similar. The only re- when we ended up in a draw, yeah, and the only, I think the only reason the only reason was that was because the mission where I could leave the objective and still own it. Yeah, yeah that's a oh yeah, which I is a good mission I had, for me too. As knights, it's a good mission for me. Yeah, yeah so because if I had to stay on those objectives, I would have been dead a lot quicker. Yeah, I th- I honestly think if I was playing the new list, I would have beaten you. 
Yeah, three. Because in, in, in our game, I just killed all of your little guys. Right. And then I only had the Castellan but, and the Magera. But if I had double Magera's and a or Preceptor. Even, or even triple. Or no, yeah, you're in. Yeah, that'd be tough. I don't know. I don't know if I can even. I have to hide a lot. And the problem is the objectives, yeah. the way they were placed with the uh, terrain, there wasn't a lot of places to hide and still right. hold objectives. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I mean. For me, I, I'm still playing the Thousand Suns, but I mean, I'm not playing at SoCal. Hopefully, I'm going to play them at um, Showdown Old in Town Old Town. Showdown, Old Town Showdown, whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. I didn't it's name it. Going through the loop here of the images. All right, but uh, I'm going to hopefully play them that that for that tournament, so I can at least play one GT. Uh, and I think I'm sticking with the the army more or less I played with you, John. Maybe a little tweak, but having the being able to basically use a deep strike every turn a unit was was helpful and got me a bunch of points, yeah. especially for engage. I, I just think hide that the... with your ability to do that, <clears throat> you shouldn't start all your terminators off the board because it doesn't well, give you enough early on to do anything with. <laughs> The reason for that is because I have to because it's it just like any psychic power I can only use it once. I think I can I can pay, I think it's two command points to cast the same power again. Right. Which I guess I guess turn one I would probably have to I would probably do that. Mm -hmm. And maybe and maybe start the big blob because depending on terrain I could start the big blob of turn terminator terminators, and the blob of flamers on the table. Right. Because I have the redeploy strat the redeploy warlord trait. Yes. That lets me redeploy D three units plus the the, the character. Right, so right, if right. I have that, I can I can hopefully bait and then hide them and then if, if and it's determined after you determine who goes first. So if they're in a spot, right. I want them to keep them. I don't I don't need to redeploy them at all. Makes sense. But yeah, it's but we'll good. see. I'll, have to, I'll be playing more games with it. I'm not playing in the league, but I'm so I'm just playing pickup games with. Yeah, neither am I this time. I just whoever. I'll probably just play the. The um, the ringer as the uh, league progresses, progresses and people drop or need to, need to pick up some games, but um, but that's for the GT in November next month, and uh, I believe that's it. Everyone's re everyone's ready to go. John, your army's ready though. Right? Oh no, you still have to build all your stuff. Yeah. Danny, yes, John's they're, they're knights, and I paint fast. It's fine. Yeah, I don't, I don't paint fast. I have so yeah, much. Yeah. I'm literally doing banding right now, um, where and I've that's actually why you, uh, shopped it out to Tom to help out for with one. Yeah, but I've been working on you know an, another set, um, which you know these aren't actually totally mine. So, um, but it's a. Uh, I mean, it's just like right now. I'm just. I've this whole time. I've been going over one with a. Uh, uh, you know, I already did the all the banding, all the bronze banding, and now I'm going over it with the wash to actually bring out the detail. Right. And right. so it's like, oh, yeah, hey, all this banding you did, yeah, do it again. Yep. <laughs> welcome to chaos. Yeah, I mean, I know it's just well, man, welcome I to love... welcome to new chaos, I guess. Yeah, I Probably love those. Wasn't that new? Is it? Wasn't that a seventh edition? No, six. Yeah, I think it came out when Apocalypse, the first redo of well, Apocalypse. New, came out. new. Well, new for me is any is ba and with the banding because before sixth edition, banding wasn't as wasn't as big of an issue with chaos. Yeah. It was more of the spikes and the skulls and all that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's but plenty after of skulls. Sixth, sixth edition was when they introduced the Mauler Fiend, Forge Fiend, and Helldrake. Yeah. Which are banding all the, over. With all the, <laughs> all the banding. It's a banding explosion. <laughs> and so that, that's how that's when it started. And I think I think and I think the apocalypse you're talking about, I think was the end of fifth. Yeah, that's and when that, I remember the Lord of Skulls coming out. Because that's when that's, the plastic bane blade came out. Yeah, and that's when the Lord of Skulls came out. Right. And that's I guess that's really the start of the new chaos. Uh, yeah. End of fifth, start of six. Banding. So and, that, and I mean, that's they, how old those kits are. <laughs> you know, it it was a, uh, you know, they're um, for their age, they're not that bad, especially for the size. But fuck, man, it's so much banding. I don't know. <laughs> I, the, I put a part of the Lord of Skulls together, and I'm like, fuck this, I'm getting the chitin, and I yeah, I just got that instead. I like the chitins. 
I always wanted to get like three it. Titans and use them as wardens in a Chaos Knight army. Yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, the new rules, they're more or less um, like wardens in terms of they have twenty the same amount of wounds, right. the gun, the, the chain sword, essentially. They don't have the special rules anymore. Right. So they're just like regular knights. At some point, they're, if they're... we ever get a Chaos Knight Codex and wardens are still good, I might still do that. Because well, they're such just... cool looking models. I mean, I the what is it the the tops the actual torsos attached mm-hmm. to the main thing are not you know it's, it's real easy to pop them off. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I just take these and put a little zappa whatever on it, and you know, yeah, yeah. convert it into chitons pretty easily. Yeah, but I don't know how good. Yeah, we'd have to you'd have to play them as the uh, as chaos knights, I think, rather than the actual forge world model. Right. Well, the kite. Yeah, I mean, the, the chitons not all that great. I mean, it's definitely not as good as a uh, Lord of Skulls, for not that no. much cheaper. So, and it's not, and it's not as good as a Warden. I don't think. No. Well, no, because it doesn't have access to any of the right. uh, the, the yeah, chaos stuff. and yeah. household traditions or whatever they call them in yeah. the chaos mm-hmm. Knight book. It would yeah. benefit from whatever Legion trait, but the Legion traits aren't very good. It's pretty meh. So, you know. Yeah. I mean, don't Legion traits not work on vehicles anyway? Oh, it's only right. characters, um, characters, bikers, and infantry, and the Hilberts, yeah. What if your vehicle's a character? No, there you go. It would. There you go. That's why Disco Lords. Mm-hmm. That's why it works on Disco Lords. Fair enough. Um, so other than that, and then uh, Tom is also going, as John, as uh, Danny mentioned, he's mm-hmm. taking his uh, Ultra Alpha, Alpha, Alpha Marines. Yeah. Which, which we, heavy... we joke about, but they, he's actually done a good job painting those. <laughs> They look really good. They look yeah. nice on the table. Yeah. They really do. Danny, do you know what he has in his list? Just so uh, it's two redemptors. It's three contemptors. Um, it's two or three infiltrator squads. Nice. There's a smash chaplain, um, and then there's two squads of eliminators. Okay. Huh. Yeah. Um, and then Gilliman. <laughs> you know right. that guy. Yeah. Uh, so I would not little, take yeah. Gilliman. Yeah. <clears throat> It's, I mean, it's a brutal list. Um, I mean, he easily, like, without a problem with Oath of Moment and all that shit, picked up a Lord of Skulls with, like, basically two Contemptors and part of a Redemptor. <laughs> yeah. Like, just instantly. It was, like, sad. Um, you know, and really, like I said, the reason he lost the game we played is that he just, he moved his Infiltrator's um, to try and get, you know, Rod, but left an opening for my uh, Red Butchers to go in and pick up a Redemptor and his Chaplain, and then have to force yeah. him to, like, spend resources to get rid of them the next turn. So my, uh, you know, my one, my Karn had a chance to escape to safety and start camping an objective that he could never get to anymore, you know, that it wasn't going to be, it was going to be real hard for Tom to get to. My healthy Lord of Skulls got to back off and still get lineup shots and kill another Contemptor and you know, basically stay out of harm's way so that, you know, all of a sudden I was going to start scoring my grind them down secondaries Mm -hmm. and, you know, picking up his stuff. And that was really it. If he hadn't really, if he hadn't moved, I don't, you know, I wouldn't have been able, I don't think I would have been able to do much. I think I just, you know, I I would have lost maybe not big, but I definitely wouldn't have won. Right. I mean, I also didn't win big. I think I won like 70 to like 60 something without paint. Wins a win. I think, it was, yeah, it was, no. it was pretty close. <laughs> no, it was a good game. Like I said, Tom really just made one, one mistake. <laughs> that seems to be the theme with Tom. I mean, it's a, it's you know because it's a castle list. It's yeah. one of those things. If you can't make those kind of mistakes, you can maybe make a target priority mistake or you know yeah. something like that. But you cannot make a positioning mistake that keeps things away from your castle. You, you can't make mistakes as a Space Marine player either, unless it's Deathwing or Deathwing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You literally can't make mistakes. Like it's it's too much. You well, we've lose. had this discussion before with with Tom at tournaments where he's like, "Oh, I, if I just hadn't if I just hadn't moved Gilliman," and then the next game he lost because he didn't because he did move Gilliman. Or <laughs> it's funny yeah. because like one game he lost because he moved Gilliman, then the other game he lost because he, he didn't move Gilliman. Right. Yeah, he's he's too much like a. I need to know exactly what's going to happen in given situations. And so he's like, so I just should never move Gilliman if I think I should. And then he goes too far that direction. Like, 
Yeah. He's, he needs to learn it how happens. to adapt to the actual battle space as is, instead of like a preconceived idea of what he should do. Well, it's the uh, ancient, uh, what was it? It's uh, the great distinction of strategy versus tactics, right? Like, right. strategy is your game plan before the battle overall how you design your list tactics is actually like what decisions are you making in the middle of the moment based Mm -hmm. on the you know the fluid variables of a battlefield right yeah right and like that's you know that's really hard because you can net list uh, you know you can net list your strategy it's really hard and you have to really actually focus on developing tactics in the game right yeah for for me like when i played john it was the, the previous time we played i had targeted like his big guy first the the uh, Castellan. This game, John put everybody in front, the little guys in front. So I just went, went ham on the little guys for the first two turns. And it just came down to him killing stuff with his big guys. Yeah. And if I'd had the three big guys, I wouldn't have cared if you did that. Because my big guys yeah. locked up your army. It didn't matter. Yeah. Because you would have like three less little guys. Because what ended no, up happening was. I only have was... two less little guys. Really? Because the Castellan so many goddamn points. Oh, that's right. Yep. Yeah. It's so beautiful, though. <laughs> yeah, the list I'm going to take instead of instead of six little guys has four. Okay. But three big guys instead of two. Yeah, but we talked about where next time you're probably just going to put your three big guys up front and just dare me to, like... Against to you? Yeah, I one, would. Basically. Yeah. yeah. I'd be like, hey, come yeah. and get me. Because my little guys can mop up, too, once... Yeah, I've eaten a lot of your army. It just depends. Yeah, I don't. It's... Yeah, I don't know if I can. I can maybe take one big guy, and the little mm-hmm. guys. I don't think I can take two. I think the result would be the same, except I would lose a lot more, a lot faster. That first game we played, you didn't kill the Castellan or the Magara either until you finally killed. The, you left the Castellan on like four wounds, and finally oh, was yeah. able to kill it on the last turn. And again, that was a super close game. Yeah, that was another one. Mortal wounds, wound spam um, sucks. Well. If I had yeah. taken that poor the witch in our first game, I would have won it. Yes, because that will give you like fifteen points. No matter yeah, and, it, and I and I didn't do one of my secondaries very well, and I I only lost by like five points. Yeah, and in our second game, I I didn't even bother doing one of them because I knew I couldn't because I'd die anyway. Right. And then I prevented you from getting any more points in engage on fronts because I killed all the little guys. Right. And with two knights, I can't get engage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But. Um, so that so so hopefully so hopefully John, uh, we probably won't have another episode till after SoCal Open. So in three week in uh, three weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because so we're before we, go, before we do go, John, what's your prediction for yourself for SoCal? Uh, How do you think you'll do? Three and Four three. and two, three and three. Three and three. All right, Danny. Uh, no, I'm gonna win everything. Know. I'm gonna go nine and zero. Nine and zero. Why not? Uh, I mean, I think honestly, I'm probably going to go two and four because you know I'm I'm going to be real drunk. Uh, <laughs> I'm just I'm just putting. <laughs> He's going to be honest. He's without his family for a weekend, so gonna yeah, exactly. I, I'm going to do what I, he wants. Yeah, I'm going to I'm I'm going to be consuming it, alcohol very heavily, um, which is why I'm bringing this list um, because I can play it <laughs> and be pretty pretty not sober. Um, so yeah, I I have no intention of actually doing well. I mean, I think if I'm you know being if I'm if I think about it and I get good matchups, um, I could probably go four and two, maybe even snake a five and one if my matchups were godly, like it was pretty much all Space Marines or Dark Eldar, where it's right. like ah, like I'm just blowing you the fuck away. <laughs> um, well, you never know. <laughs> but I think there's too much sisters and and ad mech, and I think <laughs> sisters would be a problem because it's hard for me to screen them out, so they're going to get in melt range, and unless right. I get hot with those five ups, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't see the problem. I don't have that problem, right, John? Uh, you don't. <laughs> I also don't have. I also don't have a problem failing lots of saves. So, yeah, neither do I. My my problem is uh, just regular three plus armor saves. <laughs> I can my make favorite it one was saves. I was like, okay, I'm gonna roll these twelve dice, hitting on threes, sixes explode. Uh, okay, I hit four times and there was no sixes. Cool. <laughs> oh yeah. No, the <laughs> was, the, was the was the two Overwatches and he killed like one guy. Yeah. That's why I have a shit ton of rerolls in my army because. I skew so bad that it's just like, okay. Well, then I, one I, of my knights blew up and blew up my other knight that only had one wound left. <laughs> there was. Yep. But that's typical John. That's, yeah, that's typical think, cascading it, knights for John. Yeah. Yeah. Ever since that game with Travis, he got cursed. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, we might have to sacrifice a chicken or something for you, man. Get you get you clean. <laughs> I'm okay for that. We can do that. We get to eat it afterwards, right? Uh, no, it's a sacrifice. You're not supposed to. Oh man, what a waste. that's why it's called a sacrifice. What a waste. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. I like chicken. Yeah, yeah. So do I. <laughs> We can go get you. I can go get you chicken. I think it's like that movie it's Major that, League of like <laughs> in Southern California. Yeah. Um, what about Tom? How do you think Tom's going to do, John? Ooh, three and three. Wow, Danny. I think. Um, no, he's he's he actually is pretty fluent with his list. So for the most part, so I'm going to give him the benefit down and say four and two. But I think he wins like, three games day one and gets in his oh own God. head and loses three games mm. day two. I'm getting flashbacks to the last two SoCal Opens where I went two and one on day one and then 0 and three on day two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, see, yeah, I had the I had the complete reverse of I went one and two last time. I went one and two day one and three and oh day two. <laughs> right. That was with good iron hands too. Yeah. Um and then you sold it for profit afterwards. Yes, I did. <laughs> or... <laughs> I literally finished my my last game and walked over to the uh, second hand shop and was like, "How much are you going to give me for this?" Yeah. Um, for John, which I'll I will say... not do with this army. <laughs> Let me see. I'll I'll say yeah. I'll say three and three for John. Mm-hmm. Only because he's not playing the list that he wants to play, the optimized list. I think. Oh, without the you three McGarry. <sighs> Without the, well, three. it's not the Harpster list, I think. I, well, I mean, we were discussing can... it, and Jack actually thinks this is the better list. Really? Yeah. Okay, so it's going to be Pilot Error? Well, yeah, it was always going to be Pilot Error. always Pilot Error. It's, <laughs> I, it's always either Pilot Error or Pilot Success. I need you to go 3-3, three and because three, I don't know if I can last a year a year of you talking about how you 6-0 and oh and went to the top 8. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> That's not wrong. I mean, come on. You know you know you want to see it in the chat for other reasons. I do. No, I absolutely would I would I would be quite uh, happy to see John do that. Uh Danny, I'm going to say Danny goes four and two. Oh, wow. The, the, repeat, li- huh? the list has been doing well. It did well at Hammer and it did well at the team tournament. Yeah. So I I'm a, but I'm going to say you're going to go Maybe two and two and one both days. I'd be fine. Or with that. three or, or three and oh day one. And then uh, then you'll be so hammered the next day you'll go <laughs> you just do a one and two. Well just I, I just think if, if I'm gonna win any games, it's probably gonna be my first and second game. Or actually it's gonna be my first or last game, uh depending who's driving of each day. Because <laughs> like if someone's driving if someone's driving me, then I'm just gonna get continually more drunk as the day goes on. But if I have to drive, then you know I'll be the drunkest game two, and then game three will be like, okay, I need to sober up. I mean, I can drive. We know I don't drink that much, so yeah. You also have the exact same car I do, so it's not like you know, it's, true. it's like here and drive. It's not like driving drive literally the exact same know. car. Yeah, I, I I don't drink that much, so I can definitely be the person who drives. I I I make no comments about anything. That's fine. I'm gonna say Tom goes four and two mm-hmm. at worst. Ooh, and that Tom has a a. And five and one at best, because Tom's going to have that uh, table slamming moment in oh, in no. one of the last two games <laughs> on Saturday, oh. well, and then I get to card him because of it. Nice. Because I will. think it would that be would awesome. actually be amazing. If and Tom, I we've warned him about it before. To see that. I think it would be awesome would. if Tom went six and zero, oh, and then it totally would. had a meltdown live on stream. <laughs> oh my God. Round wow, one Sunday hateful, morning, guys. Oh my god! Just wow! Makes all the wrong decisions, plays something wrong, gets yellow carded, hits the fist on the table, gets a second yellow card, all on stream, because uh, he goes six and zero day one and gets in his own head. There you go. I, I think Jones we should all pray prediction. for my scenario. Honestly, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not as know. the only Catholic forty k podcast. <laughs> we should all pray and do a, at least one decade of the rosary to the success of my prediction. I'd have to find one first. <laughs> I got I'm pretty it. sure I have one. I got plenty. House. I'll give you one. No, I, I'm pretty sure I have one somewhere in the house. I yeah, I'm I, I'm pretty sure I don't. I've got a lot of stuff, but I don't think I have a rosary. So anymore. it's the only Catholic forty pay co- K podcast. I'm going to bring you one, Danny. On That's Tuesday. fair. <laughs> Actually, I probably do have one somewhere. To be, I'm fair. sure you do. I mean, I'm I have sure. a lot of. I'm sure you do. 
Um, I have some. I mean, besides the one like awesome. tattooed on my chest, but. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, you could just count them off on that one. It's fine. It's That's true. Yeah. yeah. All right. Every, everybody's playing a decade of the rosary to get Tom to go six and zero, and then melt down live on stream. First. See, I want, it. I want to go six and zero and be mic'd, and then like when they're like doing the introduction, just constantly do like the dad's dance from Bluey, just to like <laughs> mess with my opponent and the fact of like I have no business being here, and I'm just gonna get. Right. Do you see my meme army? <laughs> Yeah, you exactly. see my meme army? <laughs> it's like know, there's there's a good I, version I of this list, it. and it's not mine. <laughs> I think you can make it. If I get good matchups, yeah, until I run into, you know. I mean, it would really be about, am I ducking Admech um, yeah. and God, a yeah. competent sisters player? Yeah, we joke about, like, our winning records, and then if you meet more than one Admech player, your winning record goes out the window. Like... <laughs> It depends. I, my my list can beat Admech. It's just that becomes: Do I go first? And are they? Yeah. Am I a better enough player where I can do the player pace terrain where I don't give them a lot of places to hide and just be able to nuke enough off the board to where they can't grind me right. out? Yeah. And then they don't right. they don't screen properly against my red butchers, and those things just start eating. Like on the turn they drop, eat like you know three, four things. Right. Because <laughs> they give me a bunch of sweet multi charges, <laughs> like doable multi charges, you know. Would be good, yeah. But again, that's like I would definitely. It's if it's a competent, if it's especially if it's a strong, uh, admec player, it's like nope. <laughs> Unless like again, dice are really like either screw them or are like I love you and you're gonna make all your five up saves or all your three up saves or whatever, right? Right. Which happens. I mean, I've definitely skewed sometimes into a win that way, where it's like, all right, well, by the math, this guy should be really freaking dead. And it's like, oh, look at that. I rolled seven out of eight five ups. So <laughs> I guess I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. And of course, so, I've yeah. also rolled um, five. I failed five out of six saves on a three plus. <laughs> We've all been there. That's, that's why, also happened to me. That's why so. I only make five plus saves. <laughs> I don't make two three plus saves. Yeah, right. I can make two plus saves. That's not a problem. Uh, I had a game where I made forty nine out of fifty two plus saves. Oh yeah. Of course, I only had one wound left. Right. But still, <laughs> you made him sweat. <laughs> yeah, it was against Tim. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and I didn't have any any CP for the reroll. So. Oh no. You know, I've never CP reroll saves anymore for the most part. I only or anything. I so only the only thing I think I ever CP reroll is charges, yeah. charge distance. I CP reroll rerolled a, a save against John just to watch him sweat. Fair, fair. So mm. M- meme CP, <laughs> meme CP. <laughs> yes. meme CP. That's more or less sure. what it was. I didn't really need to do it, but right? I just wanted to see John. It's true. Um, okay, moving on. Questions? You have any questions? In the chat. Ask them now, or be or be silent. We have one question from the Patreon, which is from Dan. From our what? Uh, do you th- do you think the 40k game is restricting Black Library from making new lore and no. moving the story forward? I don't think that there's. I don't think the two are linked like at all. Like like the kid. Well. Like, can they add new characters, but they can't exactly take them away? Basically, like, I guess he wants them to off kill off, like, Ragnar Blackman? I don't understand. <laughs> or anybody, really. I mean, uh, well, what's his name? Calgar should have died, I think, three times already. I mean, maybe maybe there's, like, a rule for the Black Library writers, the writers that they can't, like, kill off a character in the game. I don't know, maybe. But as far as, like, right. advancing the storyline, I don't think there's any restriction on it. That would be weird. In regards um, to that, they, I don't know, I, I, they haven't, they haven't uh, really, I mean, they've advanced it, but they haven't. I know they re- kind of retconned the original Indominus book, sort of. I mean, also, none of us knows anything about the Inner For sure, yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I don't know. I don't, I don't feel um, like they would do that. I feel like they would allow them to advance the storyline I mean, if I, they wanted to. I I thought I saw on like Twitter or something with like one of the, some of the Black Library guys talking about like that you know they have a um, you know they that's actually funny enough they have a lore bible right that like they have to kind of stick to right like right. Um, but that they do have a good degree of freedom but I'm sure killing major characters is something that is only going to happen if 
the GW itself is like, okay, we want these characters are going, you know, we're moving beyond them. Um, right. You know, so I think it's, uh, I'm sure there's some, but it's probably, uh, you know, I don't think that they're too restricted of making new characters as long as the new characters don't like break canon. Right. Um, so I'm sure there's some kind of balance though. I mean, even, I mean, speaking of again, back to production Bibles and style guides, like, what is it? Uh, there's a, if you ever find it that there's like the cars, uh, production Bible, like, so like, Hey, you're making a cars movie. Here are the rules of the universe and things like that. It's like, I'm sure <laughs> that they have that and they are forced to stay to it very, very closely. Right. Yeah, I'm sure. But that, I don't think that means they can't make new characters or things like that. Yeah, but again, I mean, killing established cal- characters, I'm sure that's a question they have to ask upstairs, you know? I mean, I don't I don't see... What, well, I mean, because the characters in in game can be used whenever. There's not there's not a limit that's like, oh, the character's dead, you can't use them anymore. Yeah. You know, when, back when he was available, uh, Lord Solo Marcarius was a character for the Imperial Guard. Mm-hmm. And yeah. according to Fluff, he'd been dead for hundreds of years by Yeah, by he was a model way back when. He was a cool model, too. Yes. Alexander the so, Great in space. It's basically yes. In, in space. space. <laughs> so I, I don't see how I don't see an issue with I personally don't see an issue with them killing off a character. Like like I said, Calgar should have died at least two or three times. Yeah. In the in the last in the last couple uh, years. So but they get, they keep giving him the plot armor, so Yeah, I I don't know. I mean it's one of those things of I think be- because GW is starting to move to an actual progressive storyline that they don't want to kill characters because it's just, you know, there, it's not like it was in most editions where it was like, okay, we are constantly at the clock is about to strike midnight. Here's right. this end times. You can kind of play in whatever time period you want. It doesn't really matter. Right. And now it's actually like, no, there's an evolving storyline. So it becomes, you know, like hard to justify of like, wait, why can't I play Calgar if he died? Right. Yeah. He died yeah. like an edition ago. Why is he still a character? <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Although they I could agree. do it. I mean, they did that with freaking fantasy and Age of Sigmar and just renamed a bunch of shit. And we're like, hey, this guy's not a character anymore. Yeah. They did that with Seraphon. Like, pretty almost all of our name characters got deleted into generic unit. <laughs> Where it's like, this is a Sunblood. <laughs> generic. It's like, unit. that's. Cro- yeah. It's like, dude, that's. Cro- it was like, no, that's Crocgar. No, that's a Sunblood. <laughs> It's like, okay. This is no. generic Space Marine chapter. It is matcher. generic unit. Yeah. It's like, yeah, this is a chapter matcher in Supreme Super Ultra Artificer Armor. <laughs> AKL Calgar. Yeah. I mean, we'll see. I don't know. They they could. It, it also depends who's in charge of that department. Yeah, which is no idea. <laughs> so if they're in charge, they don't want to see any characters die for whatever reason, then they, they won't allow it. But as soon as they do, we'll, we'll see who they kill off. <laughs> yeah, we'll know. We'll know. <laughs> by the gnashing of teeth yeah I'll turn um, into Game of Thrones all of a sudden no, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I don't see any qu- other questions in the chat no I think we are gonna I think our next episode is probably gonna be after SoCal Open that way we can we can mm-hmm. immediately talk about our experiences there hopefully um, we get a pod save before though like out yeah for sure we will there should be one which, there should be one next week yeah, I'll see there. Speaking of which, uh, don't forget as as you've been seeing on the memes that we do have the uh, podcast Grand Alliance, which includes our show, Pod Save the Imperium, which is a lore based uh, podcast, mm-hmm. uh, Flying Monkey, which is another competitive podcast, but in, from the mid- they focus more on the Midwest scene. Uh, focused Fire Party at the All Points, well, Party at the All Points, which is uh, Age of Sigmar focus. Mm-hmm. For, that's for Danny, really. Hey, then, they uh, they put out good content, man. Like their overview of Sons of Bahamut was very helpful. Yeah, you they do actually. I, I listened to one the other day; it was actually really good. I liked it. Yeah. And uh, the last but not least is Focused Fire, which features Alan and uh, Alan, Jeff, and Brandon Grant. They their last episodes talks about their experience at the Las Vegas team tournament. Be sure to listen just to see how they what they thought and how their uh, mental approach to the game is really insightful. Yeah, I think if you if, to play in a team tournament. Yeah, I, I think it's almost required required listening if you're like interested in doing a team tournament and you kind of want to know how to like 
best navigate that is a great episode to listen to. Yeah. Especially if you're going to go to an FLG style. Yes. Tournament. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, uh, and then we also have our sponsors, which is, uh, Hammerhead Games, Hammerhead Games.net, or just go to the Shark Tank on Facebook. Uh, he always has sales and consignments going on, and they're actually running a lot of events up there in the Sacramento area. And then uh, our main sponsor is Gameology Pasadena. You just go to their website, GameologyGames.com. What a great they website. Do, they do uh, ship to and take online orders. So if you can't find something at your store, they may have it. Go ahead. It doesn't cost you anything to check. Mm -hmm. um, they they also have as you've been seeing on the uh, screen they are helping us run the gts they we they hosted battle for lay hammer wrath they're hosting the uh, tournament the gt in november mm -hmm. old town so showdown the old, old town showdown which we had to change <laughs> <laughs> but uh that's in november they'll be running one in february but mm -hmm. that's around and that's around uh the weekend right before valentine's day mm -hmm. and the and the week before president's day weekend so right. mm -hmm. so just uh if you're interested if you're in the pasadena area especially around november uh 13th and 14th check it out sign up weather and, in socal november is generally pretty good so you know you yep about that. yes since we don't get rain anymore yes <laughs> Although it's supposed to sprinkle uh, tomorrow, I guess. Mm -hmm. So they say. But uh, be sure to check them out. Uh, it helps us, helps them, helps keep the lights on, and helps us keeps keeps us a place to play. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, John. Great any uh, any last words before the tournament? Um, any helpful advice? Yeah, don't Anything. forget any of your stuff at home. Mm hmm. <laughs> I don't think Alan's listening anymore right now. Oh, Alan, don't forget any of your models at home. Don't forget your tape measure. Don't forget your dice. Don't forget your don't forget your rules, and don't forget any of your models. There you go. Bring money for beer. Danny. Yes, Danny. Um, if <clears throat> come say hi if you're at SoCal. Uh, I apologize, depending at what state of uh, non <laughs> non linear time I'm in. Um, <laughs> And uh, um, I, I apologize for nothing. And uh, yeah, uh, play games and be nice to each other as always. Well, once again, thank you everybody for listening. Good night and have a pleasant tomorrow.